Hello and welcome to AC's 8-Bit Zone. This Septandy episode is dedicated to the Dragon, which is a cousin of the color computer. Today I'll be installing digital video into a Tano Dragon and a Dragon 32. That's coming up right now. Okay, and here are the stars of the show today. This is a Tano Dragon, and this is the Dragon 32. These are from the collection of Brian Weasler. Thanks go out to Brian for loaning these out so that I could make this video. The Tano was made for NTSC video regions, so 60 hertz uh, video regions, and uh, the Dragon 32 was uh, was European and it was made for PAL regions and 50 Hertz. The Tano is definitely more like the North American color computer than is the Dragon 32. Um, the Tano is, is made for NTSC video 60 Hertz operation and its circuitry is largely a clone of the color computer. Uh, there's a lot of compatibility. I'm, I'm not sure where the compatibility breaks, if, if any at all but they're very, very similar to the color computer. Let's look at the back of it. Uh, okay, this is a connector board that I've just installed for Coco Digital Video. So ignoring that, uh, normally, and, a, and there was a previous mod here that I don't know anything about, uh, but it looks like it was a composite uh, video mod. Uh, but normally there is, normally there is this video output right here. Uh, this is a uh, five pin DIN and it has composite video and audio out. The, uh, the connectors that are normally in the back of a Coco are over on the left side of, of the Tano. So here, uh, joystick, tape, and serial port. Uh, it also had this printer port. And uh, this was the RF modulator and the reset button. Okay, let's compare that to the connectors of the Dragon. Okay, so again, the 5-pin DIN for the, the PAL composite video and uh, the on-off switch. And I didn't mention it on the, the Tano, but uh, this is an odd usage of the 9-pin D-shell connector. This is uh, the power input from the external transformer on, on both machines. And uh, Brian loaned me a 60 hertz power supply that will work in either of these machines. Okay, now clearly missing on the Dragon 32 is the serial port. Uh, it, it does have the parallel port, so I'm not really sure uh, what the Dragon does for serial unless it uses some pins on the parallel port. Uh, if, if someone knows, maybe they could leave some information down in the comments on that. Uh, and clearly I have some uh, temporary wires dangling out here for the digital video mod. This is the connector board. Okay, now we'll open the Tano and have a look at the digital video mod. Okay, so the VDD chip is the MC6847. It's pulled out of its socket. The Coco DV is installed in there in place, and the VDG is replaced on top of Coco DV. Then there's wiring for the remote push button, and uh, this, and then there's the flex strip for the digital video. Over here on these two wires, we're picking up sound from the the DAC chip. Okay, let's put the cover back on. And this is the external transformer supply that I was referring to earlier. 
with its nine pin DIN connector. Okay. And uh, this sort of a uh, five pin DIN cable is was used for the uh, for the audio video from the rear connector. Okay, powering up the external supply. And we have the RF display over on the left and we have digital video on the right. Okay, and let's plug in a quick little test program to uh, look at the artifact colors. Okay, I don't know how it looks on video, but uh, to me that looks like a, a pale green and red, like the artifact colors are, are off somehow. And this is a little bit more what I would expect, the, the blue and then the sort of orangish red. And uh, back here on the uh, connector board, there's a push button switch to cycle through the artifact modes. And clearly, the artifacting modes are only going to be uh, affecting the, the digital video output. Okay, and this is the monochrome mode. And then back around to the uh, first artifact mode. So there, are, these are just different uh, types of artifacting based on, on different lookup tables. And uh, then there's uh, there's four different varieties of artifact mode for the the red color set and then there's the blue color set so that you can do the the usual red blue swap that uh, the, a lot of the games required that, that used artifact colors okay now let's look at the same thing over on the PAL over on the PAL uh, Dragon 32. So it uh, turns out uh, I don't really have a way to view the the raw PAL uh, video output from this Dragon 32. So here I've installed a, a temporary okay I've temporarily installed Coco DV into the Dragon 32 so we can just see what it looks like. Okay, turning off the Tano, moving some connectors over. Okay, so there's the, um, the audio video cable, which we're not going to need because I don't have a way to show PAL video on any of my screens as far as I know. So the, uh, the composite PAL is, is not an option for me. Okay, here's the, uh, the power again that works with either of these. Okay, the video connector. And my external speaker. Okay, put the cover on and turn on the external transformer supply. Oh, let me uh, redo that with... Okay, turning on the supply to the Dragon 32. Okay, 1982 Dragon Data Limited. Uh, the, the first thing that I immediately noticed is the, uh, the monochrome cursor and the slow blink rate. And... Uh, quickly discovered that the cursor mimics the background color. 
Okay, so so that's different. Right? Okay. Well, it's not it's not the background color, it's it's sort of the uh, Okay, it's not following the background color, it's something else. Magenta. Okay. Okay, so um, so it looks like at the moment the cursor is the the text background color, which is a uh, a dark green, a, a nearly black dark green. If I do a CLS one, the background becomes green, but the cursor is is buff. So the cursor is sort of the um, the same color number, but in the other color set. Let's see if, that's, if that holds true. Okay, so now the background's yellow. The cursor's cyan. Three. Yeah. Four. Okay, yeah, so notice four. Let's go, and go to five. Green. Yeah, okay. I think I see the pattern. Okay, yeah, so uh, it looks like when you change the background to a number one through eight, the, uh, the cursor blinks as uh, the same color, but in the other color set. So uh, one and five, so, so background of color of one maps to a cursor of five, background two maps to six, and so on. Okay, well, that's interesting. So uh, let's like, type in our same program that we did before. Oh, the keyboard misses a few keystrokes on this keyboard. Keyboard might need a cleaning. So this program operates the same on both dragons. And if I cycle through the artifact modes, of course they're gonna be identical because they're a function of CocoDV. So all of the the so all of the graphics modes are gonna be identical to a color computer as far as CocoDV. Monochrome and then back around. Okay, well, and that's what I wanted to show you today is the Tano Dragon and the Dragon 32 running Coco Digital Video. Happy Sept Tandy and see you in the next episode. Bye now.